Well, three days of the NFL draft, we made it through the Patriots selecting a bunch of guys. Certainly, you know, it's a, there's a lot to process here. I'm Mike Duso, Paul Perillo, Patriots.com, here to kind of sum things up, wrap it up, put a nice bow on it. But first, Paul, let's talk about the day three guys. It seems like, you know, adding some depth as usual. We'll see how these guys kind of develop. What would you take away from some of the picks today? Yeah, you know, the, the, one of the things that really struck me, you know, and I'll lump day two a little bit into this, is just the uh, the commitment to that front seven. I think we talked about this a lot on the show on Patriots Unfiltered, um, and I think that was one of the things that Belichick really wanted to add some depth and some competition. So, you know, I think about today, day three, I think about Cameron McGrone, you know, the linebacker out of Michigan. And once again, this is now three drafts in a row where you're you're tapping into that Michigan Wolverine defense with Don Brown, my buddy from Northeastern, um, you know, so I, I was happy about that. And I think he is the kind of guy a little bit more athletic for that inside spot McGrone. So that was one of the picks. Uh, I love the idea of a running back on day three. Uh, and, and you went with Stevenson there from Oklahoma, the big guy. We all said, wow, it's LeGarrette Blunt." And then he gets on his conference call and he goes, yeah, I love LeGarrette Blunt. I've been watching. So I was like, yeah, no, I get it. And, and I think if you look at the running backs, Mike, it's a pretty common thing that Belichick likes to do. He, he gets them sort of in those middle rounds, sometimes a little higher than others, but He's not afraid to, to sort of redshirt at that position. So, you know, with Stevenson, I, I think there's a guy that may not pay dividends in, in 2021, but maybe down the road a little bit more. Then you get a, an offensive lineman out of Colorado and William Sherman, I think, you know, again, same kind of deal. Last year, you get a Wenyu in Haran. Uh, you know, the, you also picked Dustin Woodard. You know, Woodard obviously didn't pan out, but the other two did, you know. So you get some developmental linemen in day three. I think that's what you're looking at on day three. You, had, you know, you had a wide receiver later on. A safety out of Missouri, uh, my boy Bledsoe, Joshua yeah. Bledsoe, there you uh, and go. Trey Nixon, you know, went the receiver from from Central Florida. So I, I think that's the kind of stuff that I like to see some depth pieces, uh, some guys that are going to be able to contribute on special teams. You know, in the case of Bledsoe, it, you know, if he sticks around, he he has that athletic profile. So a lot of different things in day three, and, and I think you can sort of understand and see where things, uh, you know, kind of fit in. Yeah, filling depth, absolutely. And I know everybody was waiting for a wide receiver. So getting Nick's in there right at the end, certainly uh, maybe maybe calm the masses a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> going back to days one and two, you know, just obviously the, the biggest part of this all was, was you know, taking Mac Jones at, at 15th overall. We all knew coming into this, you know, the quarterback is just a huge need for this team long term. Uh, you know, just people, there's certainly some things that we love about Mac Jones, other things, you know, there are some concerns with him, but overall, you got to love getting a young guy in the building, really excited for camp this summer to see how he looks. His skill set fits what they do. You know, it just overall, just having a guy to kind of attach that hope to. Yeah, Mike, we can talk about Christian Barmore, and, you know, and Ronnie Perkins and, and Cameron McGrone and, and all of these other guys. But ultimately, the 2021 draft class is going to come. It's going to be known for how Mac Jones performs. How does he develop and have the Patriots found their quarterback of the future? I'm extremely excited about the idea that they took a quarterback in the first round. I'm a little lukewarm on Jones himself. I, I want to see it, uh, you know, on the practice field. And like you said, uh, I'm really looking forward to watching him in training camp. I've been very impressed with him uh, in getting to, to meet him. I won't say getting to know him because we don't know him yet, but we did get a chance to meet him. I came away very impressed. I thought he came away sounding like a real polished guy, like a quarterback. He sounded like a guy who's uh, not uh, afraid of the spotlight, uh, used to being in that situation. And again, like I said, Mike, we, we can talk about all the other guys and all the hits and misses. This is ultimately going to come down to how Mac Jones performs. Absolutely. Well, you know, and I, as a, you know, I'm a front seven guy, Paul. So I got to, I got to do a little bit more on Barmore and Perkins. You know, the, those two guys they picked up on day two and, you know, trading up to get Barmore. So certainly the, I think the only tra tra trade that Bill Belichick made this weekend, a little bit strange, but I think Barmore certainly worth the capital to go up and get him. Maybe not the overwhelming need there at a defensive tackle, but a guy that probably the best defensive tackle in this class, even though it's a weak class, yep. he can do it all. Ronnie Perkins, I mean, they're both just really hard playing, tough guys, can play in a couple different spots. They fit it. I mean, overall, this offseason, Bill Belichick has just remade this front seven. Yeah, and that that's a big takeaway for me overall. And, you know, I, I look at the, the day three picks, right? And, I, and I'm going to lump day two in this a little bit because I think those two guys that you talked about, especially Barmore, um, you know, you, you, you often find like the developmental linemen, you know, linebackers and safeties that are going to be special teams players. And the Patriots did that. You know, they, they got those guys, too. But I think they also had an eye toward competition is something I wrote about on the site, uh, you know, over the weekend. Just, you know, look at some of the guys they've drafted recently and, you know, how they have performed. You, know, you get into the point 
you know, Jawan Bentley, Chase Winovich, you know, more recently, Josh Uche, Anthony Jennings. You got to try to make a decision on where these guys fit in. Are they going to be part of the future or are you going to let these guys go when their contract expire? And I think what these guys do, Barmore is going to fit right into that, in, you know, that inside. He's going to have a chance to play right away. Ronnie Perkins is going to be pushing those guys on the edge for playing time. He's an athlete. He's a guy that can play a 4-3 end. You, as you like to say, you play with his hand in the dirt, you know, and do all those kinds of things. Maybe he's a little different than Winovich, but I, I think those guys are going to have a little push behind them. And if they get comfortable and complacent, this is a great situation for Bill Belichick because he has guys that he drafted that are going to be hungry to take some jobs. Well, as always, a lot of fun guys, exciting guys. I mean, you come out of the draft, got to be looking forward to training camp a little bit, but they're not quite done yet. Let's not forget about the undrafted free agents that'll be start rolling in this weekend. We'll see who they else they bring in, but it was a great weekend. We're excited. We got some new players uh, to play with to round out this roster. It's exciting. We'll see where they fit in and how it all comes together this summer. So for Paul Parillo, I might do so. Thank you guys for tuning hey. in. And we'll, yeah. You did a great job this weekend. I want you to be congratulated. Here's a little fist bump for you. We've got our guys. We're all set. Good job with the big 50 big board. You know, how many did you end up with? Three, two, three. Two. two. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, hey. That's all right. You know, you did a great job. I appreciate it, Go Paul. You it. too. A lot of fun. What a blast talking with you guys all weekend long. And, and hopefully all you fans enjoyed it, providing some insight for you guys. And hey, we're here for the long haul. We'll see you guys uh, hopefully sooner than later. Maybe some mini camps coming up. We don't know exactly what the schedule is right now. But as always, you know, the Patriot news never, ever stops around here. So we'll catch you soon. Thanks for tuning in.